level 13 of my little underground. I'm Peter A. Subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Peter A. Radio. My guest today is a Long Island filmmaker. Her name is Jacqueline Zeri. And a lot of her real world film experience came actually before college when she was in high school. She was a PA for I Am Michael starring James Franco and Almost Paris directed by Domenica Scorsese, the daughter of the legendary Martin Scorsese. And we had a very, very interesting talk just about the film business and what she wants to change and her upcoming projects, like her latest film, Teen Night, which she's submitting to a lot of festivals out there. Hopefully she gets on a Sundance, at least. She's so talented. So let's bring in Jacqueline Zeri on My Little Underground. Nervous? Why? Why? Why would you be? I'm the one that should be nervous. Cause I'm the one conducting. Yeah. So I'm that's here. true. I guess I just have to ask the questions. Ah, I mean, no, I answer the questions. Yeah, I'm already messing true. up. Yes, yes, yes. Jackie or Jacqueline? Jack Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Yeah. You prefer to be called that professionally or just whatever? You know what I mean? Like normally, like people say, Jackie. Hey, you're not gonna correct them by saying no. It's Jacqueline. No, no, no. But like, I do like to be called Jacqueline now. Like, mm -hmm. I, okay, this is kind of weird. But like, when I was in high school, everyone always called me Jackie. Mm -hmm. So when I went to college, I was kind of done with. I don't know. I feel like Jackie's kind of immature, and I wanted to like mm -hmm. <laughs> embrace my mature side. So I was like, introduce myself as Jacqueline. But if people call me Jackie, it's not a big deal. I don't freak out. <laughs> I've always wanted a longer name because I'm just <laughs> I'm just Peter. You know what I mean? There's nothing extended. You know what I mean? There's something else. Like Tom, Thomas. That's true. Mike, Michael. You know? I've always wanted, like, a long... I, I love my name, but when I was a kid, when people had... Like Chris, Christopher. I wanted that long extension of my name. Is that weird? No. No, is that That's, that's what I did. Okay. <laughs> no, but Jack Holland is a, is a fantastic name. Yeah, it's I very, like it. It's very artsy. I like it, yeah. It's very artsy. It's better, it's better than Jackie. Yeah. So, Filmmaker is the title you would you would go by, right? Or Um... As of now, yeah, but yeah. in the future, director. Director, yeah. okay. But it's not synonymous, director, filmmaker? Um, I mean, I feel like director is more specific in terms of the role, but like, um, filmmaker, I feel like is all, all around type of, but I guess that, yeah, I don't know, maybe they're the same. Yeah, <laughs> so because if you're directing, you're just actually directing the film. You're not doing the cinematography. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. What you do? But you are yeah. a filmmaker if you are a director. Okay. Uh, it's a weird, weird thing. I don't yeah, know. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's whatever. Because within film, there's a lot of different things that you know. There's a lot of different hats mm -hmm, you can wear. Exactly. And would you consider yourself um, a cinematographer? Uh, X Y Z, whatever else goes along with film. Um, I mean, I've definitely, I know a lot of the aspects of film. Okay. That's what, you know, they teach us in film school. <laughs> so, okay. um, I, I've been able to be all different types of positions. So I would say, like, I know, I, I am a filmmaker, but I would, like, my interest is directing, I guess. Right. If that makes sense. <laughs> You've been doing this since you were nine? Around there, yeah. Around there, what was yeah. the what was the genesis of all this? The beginning of. Um, I don't know. I mean, well, okay. To be honest, I did see my sister making videos with her friends. I think, and that's why I wanted to do it. But I'm not sure if even before that, I, I just always had this like want to like create something. So even when I was like in sixth grade, I have like this little point shoot camera or whatever and we made, we made this um scary movie called sister sister with my friends that was the first movie i ever made um and it was uh interesting we used um we got someone comes in and they get stabbed and we used this the scissor the top of the scissor because we couldn't use a knife i don't know it was crazy <laughs> but um all the audio and the video is always messed up because i was using like windows movie maker three or something like that but that was my first ever movie i made but yeah i've been ever since i was really young i've always been doing the same thing so did you get a camera for christmas was that it um 
Well, I got a camera, like a little digital camera, not okay. knowing that I wanted to like make movies with it, I don't think. So I had that one, then I asked for something better, and I got like an Olympus pen, but still DSLR, and so, but now that I'm in school, we actually use cameras that I am making make movies <laughs> well, I guess. <laughs> so. So from then on, when you were making a movie with your sisters, you knew, okay, this is what I want to do, or did it take some time for you to know that, yes, film this is my media oh um let's see well in my in my kindergarten yearbook i think i said i wanted to be a art teacher and that lasted for a couple of times but i think by the my seventh grade yearbook i was i was film director i wanted to be a movie director so i knew pretty early on what i wanted to do i guess so you were you were a pa production assistant mm -hmm. for um a lot of films like i am michael and almost paris were these gigs pre-college or yes. even before high school? Well, I Am Michael is actually a really funny story. Um, these were during high school and you know, this movie was shooting with like James Franco, literally right down my block. So I went to go, I went to go there and um, try and just get in on the, get in on the action any way I can. And first I got linked up with this producer guy and he basically was like, okay, yeah, you come on, just don't tell anybody you're working on it. Um, and you could sort all my contacts and sort all the social media handles, like basically doing busy work for just him. And since I was non-union, it was like, I wasn't allowed. It was kind of weird because I wasn't going to get credited, but I decided to do it anyway. Um, and so he's asking me to just do all this busy work. And um, then I'm standing by a fan and he just says to this other guy, don't you wish you could just be your girlfriend? And I'm just like, oh my God, this guy is so disrespectful. Like, just dealing with a bunch of stuff like that. I was 17 years old and this guy's like 34 years old. Um, he asked me to um, go see if I had furniture for the scene because they needed white furniture. And I was like, oh, I have white furniture. I'll bring it. I was so excited. And then I come back, stuff it all in my car. And he's like, yeah, we don't need it. I was just I was just giving the dummy test to you or something like that. I don't know, treated really shitty by some people. Um, not all people, but like specifically on that set. And then I just stopped working on it because I knew I was kind of getting taken advantage of. And then he like asked me to go for ice cream and I was like, okay, this is <laughs> weird. So you never know who's gonna just want to take advantage of you. And it's pretty, you gotta keep your guard up, you know? And don't just do things. It's good to PA and it's good to volunteer, but you can't just do things for people because they feel like they're entitled to it, I guess. So that was an experience I had. So I wouldn't say I really PA'd on it. I was more of this guy's personal assistant for a couple of days. Still PA, but not the way you wanted to. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I wasn't a production assistant. I was a personal assistant. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so that experience wasn't that great, but I, every time there's a film set, I always try to get on it. When Emma Stone and the Jonah Hill thing was coming and shooting here, I was trying to get on. I come and they're like, we don't have any room for you. And I was like, I can do, I can do anything. But um, again, it was a union thing, so um, which I'm not a part of the union. Um, so you walked on the set and said, hey, I want to help. Yeah, I was like, I, I walked up to some PAs and I'm like, who can I talk to that's a producer or some production mm -hmm. manager, someone that could help me out. And then, you know, I talked to some people and all of them were like, no, but I tried different people, you know, I didn't give up. Um, so yeah, um, but then I was also production assistant on Almost Paris, um, which was directed by Dominic Scorsese, which was awesome. Um, and those are my real first- In relation to Martin? Yes, daughter. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, um, that was awesome because it was my first real PA job, not one that was just some random, <laughs> you know, thing, some random gig. But um, it was really cool, and I learned a lot about on-set etiquette. And I remember the first day I went home crying because I was like, I can't do this. Like, I'm messing up so much. I don't know what anything is. Like, I don't know any of the terminology. And then the producer who I was working with was just like, don't worry. Like, it's your first day. Um, so it was nice to have that like reassurance and stuff, but it's definitely nerve wracking being on a professional set for the first time and not really knowing. And I was so nervous in front of Dominica. Like I was like at the end of the um, 
at the end of like a rap party or whatever, I was just like, I I really like that part when this blah 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 and <laughs> I choose. I was like, okay, bye. How old um, were you at this time? This is when I was seventeen, I think, eighteen. But basically, I was at the Long Island Film Expo, and then I don't know how it happened, but I was singing, I was performing there, and then some guy just came up to me and was like, "Are you Jacqueline?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Do you want a PA for the set?" And I was like, "Yeah." I still don't know to this day how I got it, but <laughs> yeah. So, you're in high school when all this is happening. Yeah. When you're in high school, are you making your own movies or any kind of content? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was like the PSA queen. Like, <laughs> that was like my like thing I love to do. It's weird because looking back on it now, I'd, I'd make lots of PSAs about things that I totally did not really believe in. It was funny. Like, and I kind of realized this. I'd make stuff about social media and like how it's taking over but meanwhile I'd be like scrolling through my phone or like you know like eating disorders and like just not really having any relation to that and just kind of making these PSAs I mean I I was excited about them and I like doing them but looking back on it it's just funny why I chose the PSA route for so long but I feel like if you're in high school that's kind of like an easy thing to do um so what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm rambling a lot. Already. No, no, that's good. That's okay. good. Um, so with these PSAs, right? Yeah. And now you're making short films, which we'll talk about more. But I think that's good. I, I like that idea. Yeah. I think you should keep doing that now. You know what I mean? Because now that you, you're, um, you're a lot more experienced than you were in high school, I figure you would probably flesh out a lot of those ideas a lot more. Because I love the idea of, of vignettes, very short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This piece, and then it goes to this piece, and the next piece, mm -hmm. and I think you'd be really good at that. And that's a really good idea, though, that, that PSA thing. So let's fast forward, going into college, leaving high school, um, you go to uh, FSU College of Motion Arts. So what made you decide to leave New York, go to Florida, instead of just going to just... Uh, uh, in state school? Uh, well, I honestly never really wanted to stay in New York, even though it's a big, like, hub for film, just because I wanted to go somewhere new, and I hated the cold. Um, I visited some schools in California. Um, I didn't get into... Well, no, actually, I, I didn't get into USC, and then once I went to see the USCLA, I was like, wow, this is super intimidating. I'm not even going to apply. <laughs> so I never even applied to that. Um, but then I went to FSU and I saw and I got a tour of the program and I was automatically like, oh my god, this is where I want to go. Also, it's the only option because the other option I had was Miami, but it was too expensive. So I saw the program and how small it was and how focused it was and the curriculum. And then I was just like, this is where, to, this is where I'm supposed to be, I think. And then ended up getting in so that was awesome <laughs> was going away your first choice yes i had not one i had a full ride to long island university um but they didn't have that good of a film program so it was like how far is that really going to take me so um so it was my first choice and i mm. got it so that's that's uh that's amazing so most people including myself take a while to get adjusted into mm -hmm. the college system and I've always went to school in state, mm -hmm. even out of state. So it must have been harder for you to kind of get acclimated to the being away from home thing. Did you have trouble with that or no? Um, well, I studied abroad like my first freshman year before going to film school. So I I didn't have a really much of a problem going away. It was when I came back to Tallahassee, which is kind of just a lot less. Um, it was pretty underwhelming. Like I feel like you know if you're studying abroad for a whole year and then you come back and and you go, uh, you go, the culture is obviously very different. You're in just a college town. Um, so it was, it took a while to get used to, but then once I found people that I really enjoyed being with, um, it was a lot more enjoyable. So, <laughs> where did you go study abroad? In Valencia, Spain. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, did you have trouble like learning the language or? Um, a little bit, but we had Spanish classes and like, I could get by sort of thing you know and I, I tried to speak to like the store owners there and things like that and just practice and things like that so was there anything that you learned in Spain that you probably didn't learn in college or you you wouldn't have learned anywhere else I would say just 
the just some other um, other ways of life that are out there and other ways to live your life I feel it's really inspiring like you there's so many options in terms of what you how you want to like what's important to you whether it's like family or um, I don't know it was it was very cool just being on a different time like we had we had lunch at three and then dinner at ten and dinner was the most important meal to like be with be with people be with friends it was more of like this event that could last till like one in the morning we're here it's like okay let's get the check all right come on let's just like eat so it, it was really a nice sense of friendship and like family there that I really appreciated that I don't think we see as much here I guess at least where I that I've experienced so when you came back here did you feel like Oh man, Spain is so much better. Yeah, oh, how can people do this? You <laughs> know was, what I mean? Yeah, it was it was a lot of a lot of that. So, <laughs> how long did it take you to kind of get over that? That okay, this is America and Spain was Spain. Um, once I really started getting into the thick of film school and mm -hmm. my priorities were changing, I was like, okay, this is what I I got to focus on now. And it kind of took a lot of my time. That's what I was thinking about, and I was content with that and just working and found happiness or um, passion or whatever through just working and creating stuff so so I want to know about uh, the film program at FSU do you feel like it's really helping you to kind of land a career or giving you the tools that you need to land a career in the in the film business I think so I think well it's definitely given me an opportunity to learn everything on set um, in terms of career finding, I think that's more what we do the like last semester. Um, I know they set you up with like you have to have figure out your budget, figure out where you want to live, what you want to do. Um, but there is a great alumni out there in like LA and New York, so that's a really good resource. And if you contact some of the faculty, they can connect you with people and things like that. So. so a budget for like your life or just for filming something? Oh, like your life. Like oh, really? How are you going to live? Yeah. <laughs> they show you, okay, this is what you have to do. This yeah, is for yeah, films. Yeah. Really? They're, well, they, they, they make you they make you prepare for it. So like instead of you're just saying, oh, I'm going to go live in New York, it's like, okay, well, show me the numbers, like sort of thing. What? I yeah. wish I had that. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. So, um... What did you learn from that? What did you get out of that? Oh, well, I didn't do that yet. You didn't do that yet? You're yeah, doing yeah. that? I'm going to do that la last semester, so, in spring. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that, that is awesome. So, uh, you're graduating um, in May. So, mm -hmm. what are your plans? Uh, my plans, they're so blurry right now. Um, well, uh, you know, <laughs> May 2019 is right around the corner. I know. It's crazy. Um, I, well, I know I just want to be in New York or LA, get some sort of job, and then be writing and developing my first short film outside of school. So that's kind of the, the big, very big plan. Do you um, have, um, do you know anything specific that you would want to do? Like any kind of specific job in the film industry that you would do right out of college that's probably, accessible? Probably um, some sort of editing gig, maybe like assistant editor or, you know, just getting my foot in the door through that because again editing is another way to really practice your storytelling so from editing I, I like that and I also like I kind of like working alone or like with one other person you know because sometimes I just find that um, I work better that way um, so I would I would probably do something in that area but also if I can like sec first AD second AD just in that in the line of directing or editing so so, what would it be like an entry level job for someone in the film business? Because I work in radio, and mm -hmm. an entry level would be like a promotions assistant. Yeah, an entry level job. I mean, well, there's always a PA, but I think any BTL position, which is below the line, which is like any position that's not like ATL, which is like production designer, director, producer, director of photography. So anything below that. Um, but I don't. I wouldn't say. I don't know about entry level. I guess. But like, basically, you could get those jobs easier than just going straight to <laughs> producer. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta work your way up, sort of thing. Right. So you're gonna graduate. So mm -hmm. someone who's fresh out of college, just got their degree. What can like that can be a job um, that you can get without having world experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
like ATL with ATL above the line and below below the line is entry level, right? Yeah, I would okay. I would equate that. So yeah. above the line would be like a producer and direct, yeah. like, okay, cinematographer, mm-hmm. director, stuff like that, and you want to be that. Yeah, right. okay. that's what you want to work towards, I guess. Do you think <laughs> about ever, you know, working outside of film, like in television? Uh, yeah, anything's possible. Like, not like um, news or anything like that, you know, but like other series. And um, I just want to work on something that I genuinely am interested in. Um, so whether that be a series or whether that be a web show or whether that be a movie, I just want to work on... I want to work with the people and work with content that will just develop, I guess, me further, I guess, as like an artist and um, work finding those people that have those interests and kind of going from there. So, so uh, internships, mm-hmm. did you intern anywhere while you were in college? They actually like don't even allow you to intern. What? <laughs> well, they do. Well, it's just they don't allow you to have a job because the program is so intense that we're full time all the time and then I come home and I've been in school for eight straight months because I did a summer semester each semester so when I come home I kind of just want to decompress and I still now working on writing my thesis or whatever so I'm still focusing on that but I've just interned before college Um, so yeah so what about real world experience does that come from you just making films um, I mean, I've been fortunate to kind of have some of the real world experience um, when I was on the Almost Paris set or things like that. But um, I mean, we're on set for all our films for a whole semester and then we work on other people's sets. So, I mean, we do get the on set experience, definitely. Um, but we won't get that real life, I guess, for most people until they actually graduate and start doing it. So you're, you're saying like once you graduate, your experience would have been making the films that you've made in the program. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So this school kind of sounds like more of a conservatory. Oh, it right? is, yeah. It is a conservatory. Okay, all right. Well, because... you do your first year of liberal arts, and then the next three years, conservatory. Ah. Yeah. Okay. And um, a lot of the, the content you've created have been short films. Yeah. Like uh, Teen Night, which I want to talk about. But I know you're trying to work on a feature film, right? But do you have any kind of preference of short films versus feature length? In terms of like working on them or yeah. creating them? Both. Oh, um, I think for now I'm trying to stick to the shorts mm-hmm. just because it's smaller, more manageable. I can work my way. Well, in terms of working, I would work on a feature in a minute. But in terms of making my own film, I'd rather, again, start with a short film and then, then continue into a feature length because it's a big... I feel like I have to learn a little bit more before I just go straight into making like a long film. So. Right. So you're kind of taking like creative baby steps. Yeah. In yeah. order to get to that, because um, do you think that short films can be little pieces of what can possibly be a feature length film? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. That's. I mean, I think that's what I'm working towards with Teen Night and the film that I'm going to make after school um, I eventually do I think want to make a feature as of now um, kind of about adolescence on Long Island and kind of like all the hypersexuality that exists um, that's kind of not talked about or not really known um, and kind of just showing that to people so yeah <laughs> what would be an example of this kind of hypersexuality like people having multiple partners is that uh it? no it's more like uh, being so young but people expecting things of you i guess sort of thing and but and then you think it's normal so um that that's what really interests me because i just you know when i was doing research for my for teen night i would look through old facebook messages and it's crazy how many people it's it's all very weirdly sexual but these kids are like 15 14 and I think it's just a time where both boys and girls are exploring their sexual not their sexual but like they're they're seeing what's out there but then what's given to them is is putting these expectations I guess um especially on on like young girls and everything so yeah so are you being uh uh, a young woman mm-hmm. that has to maneuver through this kind of hypersexual 
thing that is youth. Yeah. <laughs> um, has the idea for Teen Night been in your head already, even when you were just growing up? Oh, no, no. I think um, that came to me when, you know, we were doing our second films of film school, and I just knew I wanted to do something in that realm because I thought it was really interesting, and just looking back on it, I wanted to explore more. I just, like, rediscovered my old my old um, diary sort of thing, which is literally, like, not your typical diary. It's printed with page protectors in a binder with full single-spaced pages and pages and pages of a bunch of different stuff but it was just crazy the thought process back then um and the experiences and the people and experiencing all that at such a young age it's like I wanted to explore that more because I know that other people have other girls have gone through the same thing and I was actually recently just I was at a bar yesterday and I was talking to one of the girls and she was like it's crazy like this, this shit we used to do like I can't believe it and I'm like I know like it's a whole other, and then you all you got to do is just learn, and you learn from it, um, and that's the best part about it, I guess, and that's what I kind of want to focus on. So, so um, Teen Night, the idea for Teen Night uh, comes with ha your interactions with people, or just kind of an idea you just kind of curated off the top, of your, not off the top of your head, but yeah. you kind of just <laughs> wrote out. Um, I can, it's based semi semi off my past, I would say. Like the actual storyline is not is something that I've created and something that I've made up but it's based on characters and people and the environment that is very genuine um, the whole the whole car packed with people and the way people talk and, and just that whole the what's the word the way, just the way people talk to each other and sort of thing like that 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 was definitely taken from like real life and I wanted to create that like the Oceanside, Long Island, like, like eighth grade or eighth to ninth grade experience that was unconventional. Like, not everyone's having that experience in ninth grade or tenth grade, but you know, some people just get start talking to the wrong person, and then it escalates. And I mean, then you just kind of get caught up in where you are, and you think it's normal. So, yeah. So, uh, Teen Night, um, this is a, a school project, passion project? Both, I would say. Like, we need to do a, we have a film we do, like, basically, we have three films, no, four films. Our first film, which is a very small crew, it's like five people, you don't get a big camera or whatever. And then we have our documentary where we get to travel, and I met up with you there, and we did our whole interview with Rucksack, um, but we me and two other people we we drove up to new york from florida did this documentary which is amazing it was like a two week long road trip maybe three weeks long then we have our f3s which is where we get the actual equipment and it's bigger cat i mean it's a bigger production um and then now we're up to our thesis film so it's like the whole shebang <laughs> so with uh with, with t9 now that it's you finished it uh, I know you put it on like a private Vimeo. Yeah, yeah. Do you want it to be distributed? Are you sending it to festivals or what? Yeah, I've, I've submitted it to a few festivals. I haven't heard back from any of them yet. So it takes a while for like for the deadline to approach her. So I'm still waiting, but I can't post it online until it, it's gone through its festival circuit sort of thing, I guess you could say. So um, speaking of documentaries, mm -hmm. right? And you did it with, you did one with Rucksack and uh, it was fantastic. Thank you. Do you mm -hmm. like doing that kind of thing? Interviewing people, getting to know, just showcasing what people do. Yeah, Is that something love, you want to do? I mean, that's, I love that and I love the experience and I loved getting to explore someone else's life. Um, not that I necessarily want to make documentaries like in mm -hmm. that format, but I, I do love just discovering about people and like, like del is delving a word I don't even know but uh, going into their characters and then exploring this that certain lifestyle and just you know I'm starting with my kind of basing off my own lifestyle when I was younger but like I eventually want to go out and learn about other people and highlight those and expose and like ha have people learn about I guess other people's ways of life and types of people yeah because you did an interview with uh, the cast of The Amazing Spider-Man too. Like, how yeah. was that experience? How did you? How, how did that come together? 
Ah, uh, wow, that was so long ago. Um, I was actually at the like Locust Valley Student Film Festival. Oh yeah. Where I had my. High I've been to a couple of those. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then and um, Sandy Kenyon, who is a uh, film critic for WABC, I believe. Um, he was like the judge of it, and at the end, he goes and talks about all the films. And I remember him mentioning like a lot of my films in it because I ended up like winning in like two or three categories. So. I knew that he like liked some of my stuff. So then at the end of the the festival, he left, and I like told my film teacher, I was like, "Can I go out there and like I want to give him my card?" And so I r like ran after him. And I, at first, I thought I wasn't gonna find him, and then I like ran to the parking lot, out of breath, and I was like, "Hey!" <laughs> from across the parking lot, and um, I went up to him, and he was like, "Oh, we were talking, or whatever." I gave him my card, and then he's like, "Okay, I'll call you later tonight. I have some some opportunity." So he called me and then he asked me to interview the cast of Spider-Man and I was like, oh my God, like, yes, <laughs> it's crazy how like weird opportunities happen like that. But so I did that um, and it was totally nerve wracking and it was really crazy. But to this day, I still keep in touch with Sandy and send him my movies. And um, I just sent him Teen Night and he gave me like a great review on it. Um, so I just love to get his reviews, and um, I'm actually seeing him tomorrow, so. That's great. Yeah, so we still keep in touch, so. That's so crazy how, um, you know, you're so young, and you're um, getting all this experience, and you're kind of make, making all these contacts. I think it's really going to help you when you when you graduate, yeah, yeah, I'm you know. I'm not worried. You, you, I don't think you should be worried about getting a job. I'm not worried <laughs> about you at all. Oh, You'll thanks. definitely find something. <laughs> um, the process of, of you uh, putting together a thing like Teen Night, or even, even the Rucksack documentary, what do you think you've learned from this, and what do you think you could have done better from producing this? Mm. Well, Teen Night specifically, there was, I, I have to, one, in terms of directing, making sure I go through every scene equally, and, you know, like, really preparing and, like, having the actors know exactly what they're going to be doing, um, because the, like, make-out scene at the end, I, like, we kind of touched on it, and I, I told them what I wanted to get out of it, but then when it came in terms of actual blocking, it was like, we are on set, and I was like, oh crap, now I have to go, like, go explain this to them, um, and I was like, I should have done this earlier. Um, so just making sure every scene gets the same amount of attention, and, um, and really thinking through logistics of things, and making sure things make sense to, to not only, obviously not to you, but to the audience who's going to see this for the first time and have no context. Um, so yeah. Was there any mistakes that you, you thought you made that um, you've learned to avoid the next time you create something? Yeah, I think um, one thing that I didn't really think through was the ID situation with you know, Kara getting kicked out of the club because a 14 year old wouldn't have an ID. So I was like, oh, I was like, she'll use her sister's ID. But then I was like, so how do you know? It's like the logistics of like, wait, what actually happens in real life? Research. I have, yeah, I have to get this in real life and in real life the, gr the girls don't get carded um so what i but what i could have done is maybe have like you need to have at least your high school id to get in um no middle school id is allowed or something but i wasn't really i was just thinking okay then this will work you know i didn't really think okay i have to make sure this makes sense um so yeah and then another thing was casting like annabella my my lead actress was amazing like she did an amazing job like everyone said the act like the acting was like phenomenal and she did a great job and like but a lot of people said that she looked too old and like um which i i agree with because she's 23 years old and we we're trying to make her play a 13 year old but she was like she was the best like actor for the part you know um but in terms of you know that being a big story point it's important to have someone who actually you know looks 13 and we tried our best to make her look 13 and um and so it works for some people. Other people are like, wait, I'm confused. Um, so that was another thing, just um, making sure, you know, with, with the casting that it is accurate um, and believable sort of thing. So so with, with casting, how mm -hmm. did you do that? Did you put like a Craigslist ad or something? Well, um, the film school actually has our own database of actors that we could access and we just hold auditions. So we'll... We'll look up people and we see their profiles and then we could email them and ask them. So I would just schedule them all in a row and then we just have sides for them to read and then we just listen to them, we talk to them and then you see if they're right for the role and then 
um, if you like them, eventually you cast them. You could bring them back. Like when I saw Wyatt, the character Wyatt, who's Dan Carney, who played him um, in Teen Night. Oh my god, I saw him sitting from across the room, and I was like, holy shit, this guy's, like, crazy. Like, he was exactly the image and the person that I wanted to, like, have. And, like, he came in... very accurate, too. Very accurate, and, like, that he was an amazing actor, and just very... His look was, like, perfect. Um... And I was kind of scared of him, too, because he reminded me too much of uh, the real thing. He's very realistic. Yeah, very realistic. Yeah. Um, I told him that. I was like, you scared me when I first met you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's actually a comedian now. He's in New York trying to start his way there. So um, he, he always jokes about how, like, he swears he's not the guy in, in the movie. Um, but yeah, so that was that was a cool experience, just, see, just having him sitting in the lobby waiting, and I see him from across the room, and I'm like... I hope he's good. <laughs> so yeah. Putting together a crew for a lot of your creative stuff like mm-hmm. Tina and and Rucksack. How do you know who to trust? Um well, basically we have a crewing session um and we kind of get to pick who's on our um on our crews or whatever, but in the end it kind of just comes down to what works with our schedule. Um but honestly, everyone in the class like is trusted is trust is trustworthy i guess they're all like very talented um and during the career process i even had some own like my own kind of uh things that were holding me back and i had thoughts about certain people i was like oh i don't know if they could do this and then they totally like pulled through 100 percent. and i was like wow i feel like shit for like for thinking that you know they couldn't do it because it made my movie look incredible so you can't doubt anyone and I, that, that's another thing I definitely learned like everyone has the potential um, and you just gotta like accept that so yeah have you ever dealt with groups that weren't you know coming through what they were supposed to do what do you mean like they didn't oh that know, weren't coming mm-hmm. through yeah um. <laughs> people that weren't reliable oh yeah mm-hmm. definitely um, it's tough uh, and it definitely adds a lot of pressure, you know, um, and you don't want to let it ruin your experience. And you kind of just got to, if someone's not doing the work, you got to just pick it, like pick up the slack if that's the case and if that's your only option because... I hate that. I know. I hate that. I've had bad groups before and I've mm. always had to pick up the slack and it's annoying. Yeah. And then you get, you know, you get shit for like... Pick, not wanting to pick up the work that somebody else should be doing. Exactly. And yeah. I hate that. I hate that so much. So, um, uh, how would you deal with a quote bad group? Um, bad group. It's well, you know, I try and talk to them and just lay it out. Say these are your responsibilities. This is what you have to do. If you're not doing it, then we need to fix that and we need to address it and we need to handle it like adults because there's it's not working right now. So. So yeah. when you get out of school and you're gonna start working on your own projects, which mm-hmm. I know you're gonna do, when you when it comes to picking a crew for that, how would you go about doing that? Well, I definitely start with the people I already know from film mm-hmm. school. Some of them that I already really trust and have a good relationship with, and those people that are kind of on the same level as me in terms of like the way we think, and you know, just people that are similar have a similar vibe, I guess you could mm-hmm. say. Um, and then even friends from home that I know have, are very creative and very passionate that even if they haven't been, you know, on a film set, if they want to help out, I'd be like, yes, come through. I just want to be around people that ins- are inspiring and are good workers and are positive um, and are cool. So, yeah. Your Rucksack documentary. Mm-hmm. I know you did that for school because you have to do a documentary as yeah. part, part of your program. Is that rooted in your love of music or what? Um, sorry, say that again. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, your Rucksack documentary project, is was that rooted in your admiration for music or you just, oh, I know no. them, let me just do this. It was more about them as people 
and how cool they were. Mm. And I, I do like, you know, I obviously like music and I thought the psychedelic music and like the, the type of music they were doing was really interesting. Um, but it was more just about them as people and just the way they lived and their, their like their their outlook on life and their personality like that was more inspiring to me I think that was the most inspiring but then the way they showed that through their music was like awesome so I love that like little combination there so you said you used to sing I used to sing yeah oh yeah, did I, yeah. I did yeah okay. I, wait when did I say that I said that I, at some yeah, point <laughs> yeah you sprinkled it in a little yeah, bit yeah I used to sing I did yeah and I still like to but I don't really have a platform to do it anymore but except like a karaoke <laughs> okay did you ever think about like making your own music or no yeah I've, I have in the past I've wrote my own songs and mm -hmm. like whatever but whenever it comes to actually like making the beat for it I really don't know how to do that and mm -hmm. then I'm just to give up and then I'll come back to it and then I'll give up again <laughs> um what kind of music were you making um or thinking about making thinking about making yeah <laughs> not actually making um kind of like I don't know if you know like Alina Baraz but it's like I don't even know. I never know how to explain this, but it's like soft, not techno. <laughs> I can't, not techno. I don't see that's not the word. I don't even, I don't know how to describe it. Just very like calming. House, electronic. But not, but not like, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> it was more like, it was like a calm, like a tranquil version of that with like lyrics, <laughs> I mm -hmm. guess. Okay. But I don't know what the word is to describe it. Ambient. Oh, like, like, um. Trancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess, mm, yeah. Okay. Um, going back to uh, back to film, what makes a good film to you? Um, what makes a good film? Um, I think that's a good question. Like, specificity. Like, I think that if the world and the characters are all very specific and all have these little unique, unique traits that really make them real, like... In the Florida Project, I don't know if you've seen that, but like, they live. They have the this one character is amazing. She's the she's like the mom in the movie, and she like is bathing her daughter, and then she has the phone in the cup with the like rainbow zebra case. And I was like, I had that case at one point. It's like these little things. Like the production design is very important, but like, yeah, I think being really specific and like making definitive choices is what makes the movie good and plus the story obviously but so you, you're you're paying attention to detail yeah to yeah. little things in the background or that make it yeah that's like mm. the detail you don't really realize that make an actual movie in a whole sort of thing so are there any movies that you think that are out now that do that um like I said like the Florida Project that are out now I don't know about now because I haven't seen movies that are out now but Florida Project and then also like American Honey which is again like Andrea Arnold as I was telling you about but like she her characters are all very different but like very real like the way she casts she goes to like real like she goes to just like random towns or random beaches and like finds real people that embody the character that she wants to create and then uses them to like help build the character even more but it's coming from real genuine places you know so I find that really cool so so when was the last time you went to the movies like two days ago oh okay. <laughs> yeah all right and I saw blind spotting which is good so so um do you think the film industry is in a great spot now I don't know <laughs> I mean I don't know but I mean I guess it, it has a lot of opportunity um, there's a lot of opportunities to show your voice, but then again, it's like, is it, is there too many platforms? Um, but I don't know, honestly, I, I mean, I'm going to wait till I see and get out there and, and test it for myself, but, um, yeah. What's something that you would think that you can add to the business that's not there? Um, I think this is more growing at this moment right now. It's, it's not like it's not there, but just perspectives that we haven't really seen before um like what like 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 true like not because a lot of the times it's like you have these movies um that are supposed to be about like coming of age teenage girl 
like there's a lot of those movies on Netflix now but then I look at the credits and it's directed by this really old guy and I'm like how do you know anything about this at all and like I just want to I want to provide like a genuine representation of a certain group of people that I I know for a fact that like I have a personal connection to this and I can show it in a way that an old guy can't (laughs) you know so yeah that's (laughs) that's <laughs> show it in a guy and old, show it in a way an old guy can I guess representation <laughs> exactly exactly mm. because uh, a male can probably create a female character yeah but if that director wants an accurate representation of what that what a female can be they probably have to talk to a woman exactly yeah you know? and it's not like oh if you're a male director like you can't obviously we want more female characters and ones that are real yeah so talking with actual women (laughs) that you know and collaborating with them um so and what's also interesting about that is because women and men you know we're not monoliths so if you talk to one person it's not going to give you yeah right so you probably have to talk to different people of different backgrounds trying Mm -hmm. to understand them and then you just have a better finished product at the end of the day exactly yeah so i think representation is the key not only in film and and, in all kinds of media and especially Mm -hmm. in my business especially in radio representation is definitely definitely key Mm -hmm. so uh what are some of your favorite directors um i i honestly like right now i my only really favorite is andrea arnold's um because her content like her movies are like really inspiring in terms of like what direction I want to go in um I'm in the process of still like discovering more movies and um so I would just say Andrea Arnold for now that's the one that I could genuinely say like yes I really I really enjoy her stuff and her vision and things like that so what is what um what's some advice that you would have for uh, aspiring filmmakers advice for uh, I'm still aspiring <laughs> but I would say don't make something that you want to make that is that you care about and don't just make something because you think other people will like it make something because you like it and you care about it and then in the end that should make your if if we see that the director or the writer cares about it it's going to be better overall so just focusing on things you you really want to like get out to the world or that really interests you would help Jacqueline fantastic (laughs) conversation where can people reach out to you or follow you um on Facebook I have a Facebook page that kind of has like updates on different film festivals and things like that but it's facebook.com slash directed by Jacqueline (laughs) and then but I also have a website which is JacquelineZeri.com my last name should I spell it yeah go ahead um, it's Jacqueline and then x e r r i dot com and there I have my real little bio experience films that I've been on um, pictures stills everything so yeah great thank you so much for doing this All right, thank so you much fun. <laughs> bye <laughs> Big thanks to Jacqueline Zeri, Long Island filmmaker on the rise, for chatting with me today on Level 13 of My Little Underground. I'm Peter A. Subscribe on all podcast platforms and hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Peter A. Radio. And check out Jacqueline's site, JacquelineZeri.com for any updates on her upcoming projects. And she's definitely someone to get to know because she's so creative, very intelligent, And you'll just learn a lot from just picking her brain and how she goes about her own creative process because the end result is fantastic. I can't wait for you guys to see her short film Teen Night. Hopefully that gets out to the public soon. I just hope that people kind of follow her path and we all can learn from that. Just kind of stay focused on what you got going on. Yeah, it's important. You got to get a job. You got to make money. But you also have to focus on your creative passions and what you want to do in life and not worry about how this thing is going to be profitable because it may like this podcast i'm not making any money off of it but i'm doing it because i love what i do and i love practicing my craft and hopefully it'll make some money soon 
This is my little underground level 13. I'm Peter A, and I'll see you guys on level 14. All right? Peace.